In this video, we're going to look at assertions, what they are, when to use them, why to use them, and why they're important when you're creating automated browser tests that are going to check your website or check your web application to make sure it's working. An assertion is basically a confirmation that something you expect to be true uh, is actually true, or that some condition or outcome is met. So a couple of common examples might be submitting a form and then actually looking for the success message or adding a product to your shopping cart and then confirming that the product has appeared in the cart. Could be something simple even throughout uh, a test or at the very beginning where you log into your application and then before you continue on, you confirm that you're on the dashboard somewhere you expect to be. We're going to look at a really simple example today of filling out this sample form. Uh, and looking for the success message. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is walk through this form um, as kind of a manual tester, just to illustrate sometimes a little bit of a disconnect and why assertions are often lacking or aren't always thought about when you're moving to an automated testing setup. So I've got this really simple form um, and as a manual tester, I'm gonna make sure this works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it out, right? Gonna add some information email address, my customer, yes, we'll add some comments, and I'll submit it. Uh, and I see that there's a success message, so that's great. So I can say, yes, the form works. Um, but what you'll notice is that the first portion of those steps, I was doing something like mechanically on the page. I was clicking on elements, filling in inputs, um, and interacting. Uh, however, the assertion is really just happening in my brain. I'm visually looking at the page and I'm saying, this looks good. I see the success message, so that works. And that's something when you're manually testing that you can do. But when you move to automated testing, you need to program in that assertion um, that the success message is there as an actual step. Uh, and that sometimes gets forgotten when you're making this change. So you might set up a test this change from manual testing to automated testing. So you might set up a test that just submits the form and you say, cool, uh, it's good to go. So let's do this again. We'll actually create a test this time and we'll intentionally leave out the assertion um, so that I can show you uh, kind of the downfall of doing that and, and why it's important to have one. I'm gonna use the Ghost Inspector extension up here. So this is a tool we offer that lets you record yourself performing actions in the browser. Um, and turn it into a test. This does have a way of creating assertions and I'll point that out, but we're just not actually gonna create any. I'm gonna create a new test. I'll start recording. It's green now, so it's capturing what I'm doing. And I'll start to fill this in exactly like I did when I was manually testing it. So I'm um, a customer, yes. I'll add some comments. I'll submit the form and I get the success message. Um, so again, as a manual tester, I might say, cool, this is working. Um, when I'm creating an automated test, I'm generally gonna use this make assertions option, which gives me a crosshair. And this lets me select this element. Uh, and as part of my test, I'm gonna confirm that it's there. However, I'm gonna skip that step just so we can see what happens and why, why that's dangerous. So instead of recording that assertion, I'll say I'm finished recording. <clears throat> give this test a name and call it sample form. We'll put in our demo suite. At Ghost Inspector, we do a screenshot comparison, which can be a nice fallback option if you don't have an assertion in place because you can catch those visual differences. Uh, and I'll, I'll show that a little bit when we run this test, but in general, you're still gonna want concrete assertions. That's really the best way to go. Um, we'll save this test. I'm just gonna pop over here to the dashboard that I've got open. So here's the test, so it's running. So on Ghost Inspector, we launched the, the browser on our servers and we walk through those same steps and give you a result. Um, this idea of assertions really applies regardless of what framework you're using. So whether you're writing a Selenium test or Cypress or Puppeteer or whatever it may be, you're still gonna want these assertions in place. So here we've got our test result that's come back and everything is passing. On the left side here, we've got our steps. Um, these are CSS selectors, and if you're not familiar with what's, what's happening here, um, just jump back to the first video in the series, uh, and we start to talk in detail about what these are and, and what they mean and how they're targeting elements on the page. You can see we've got all our actions, and then we submit 
the form at the end. If we watch our video, we can see it being filled out. And we've also got our screenshot down here that shows us this is where we ended up. And um, we can see that success message, which is good. The problem we've got right now is that there's no assertion here at the end of the test. So it's just hitting submit. And then it's basically like, whatever happens, I don't care in terms of our steps. Um, and here's why that's dangerous. So let's pop back here to this form. Um, kind of give you an example of how this might break or at least kind of mimic this form breaking. Um, it's expecting a, an actual valid email address here. And so if I try to submit without an actual email address, you see it'll give me this error. So let's replicate that in our test here. So I'll come into the editor and instead of assigning a valid email address, I'll just assign test, save it and run. <clears throat> so the test is gonna be performed again, but this time instead of a valid email address, it's just gonna put in test and that, that's gonna break the form submission. So I'm not gonna to get to that screen that says the form was successfully submitted um, because I don't have a valid email address in there. But you'll see that the steps will pass because the steps themselves right now don't care about that. They're just plugging in the values and hitting submit. So here we've got a result and you can see this passed. The screenshot here is kind of our saving grace and this is a really nice feature that Ghost Inspector has built in um, where we track what the screenshot is supposed to look like. You know, here's what it's supposed to look like with the success message. Here's what it actually looks like. You know, we're stuck on this form uh, and it can tell that those are different. Right, so it's saying, wait a second, we could fill out the form, um, right? Like all those steps succeeded, um, but we didn't get to that success message and that's kind of funky. So it's flagging that. So that's a nice safety, but we don't wanna actually just rely on that. We want a concrete assertion. So we'll pop in here. I'm gonna come down and add an assertion to the end of this test. Um, We've got a number of different options for like elements existing, are they visible, certain text, you can use JavaScript. And again, most frameworks have various options for doing this. I'm gonna choose an element is visible and I happen to know that that message has an idea of message. So I'm just gonna code in the selector here. Save this, we'll run it once again. Um, so again, it's gonna open a browser, walk through those steps, but this time the steps are going to fail because I've got that assertion in place to make sure I'm not just submitting the form, I'm submitting it and then making sure that the message is showing up. This test run is gonna take maybe 15 seconds longer. And the reason for that is because what Ghost Inspector will do is when it gets to that assertion and it's like, I'm waiting for this element to be visible and it's not visible, it's gonna keep looking and looking and looking. Uh, and we can control how much time it spends doing that. The default is 15 seconds, uh, but you can extend that and say, you know, continue searching for 30 seconds or longer. So here we are, we've got our result and you can see it's failing. And that's good because it should be failing. This, this form isn't working and it's not submitting right now. And so this assertion is catching that for us. And if we didn't have this, our test would just always be passing, which makes it kind of useless. Um, so now we've got the assertion in place and now we know something is broken here. We'll make one last change here. We'll come in and we'll fix this email address so that the test can run all the way through, give it another run. And now it should go back to passing everything because now it's got a valid email. It can submit that form. The assertion will find the message it's looking for. The screenshot will look the way it's uh, expected to look and we're in good shape. So adding assertions really gives you that level of security that you're not just blindly interacting with your application and assuming that things are working um, you're actually confirming it with these concrete, with these concrete steps. Um, so I always recommend assertions. Um, basically anywhere you are submitting a form or modifying like the state of your application, I suggest adding an assertion. So um, <clears throat> for instance, if your test begins with a login, I recommend that you enter your username, password, hit submit, and then perform an assertion when you get to your dashboard to say, hey, am I at the dashboard? Okay, cool, yes, and then I can move on. And there are a couple of benefits to that. One is knowing um, right away that something broke, if it broke, you know, it, you wouldn't want your test to kind of limp along and, and ignore some issue that happened earlier. You just want to confirm it right away and know this is where the issue is, this is what, bro this is what broke. 
The other benefit is that you can, um, I call it controlling the flow of the test. And what I mean by that is, again, when you're, when you're testing as a manual tester, you have this intuition where you submit a form, let's say you add a product to the shopping cart and there's a spinner and it lasts a couple seconds. And then the cart icon says, yes, one item. And then you're like, okay, cool. Now I'm gonna click on the cart icon and go to the cart. Um, most automated systems uh, don't always know that. So we've spent a lot of time building in logic to understand is a form submission happening? Are, are network requests being made and try to wait for them? But ultimately it's best to build in those safeties yourself. You wouldn't wanna submit a form and then immediately navigate to another URL because you wouldn't know, did, did your form complete? Did, did it stop in the middle? You know, who knows? So it's important to have these assertions um, set up in various places so that you're kind of performing a set of steps. Did it work? Yes, okay, keep going. Um, and it helps to weed out some flakiness or these issues where your test might progress too quickly. The last point I wanna make on assertions is um, to be careful also of going too far in the other direction. Um, and what I mean by that is getting absolutely crazy with assertions, like Justin said, assertions are good. So now every time I submit a form, I'm gonna assert like 30 things. Um, and uh, that can be not so useful. Um, you really wanna think about your assertions to make sure you're confirming a condition related to what happened. So. I've seen situations where you maybe submit a form and they'll assert the message, but then the tester might just start asserting like, is my logo there? Are all the menu items there? You know, 30 different assertions. And it's not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but oftentimes it's kind of unrelated to the purpose. And these tests can start to get long and, and complicated. And so you want to really stick to assertions that make a lot of sense. I added a product to the shopping cart. I'm expecting you know, the number one to appear up in this cart icon. Did that happen? Yes or no. And if it did, you can continue. So also just be careful about being too crazy and asserting lots of things that have no bearing on the functionality that you're trying to test. So um, it takes a little bit of thought to understand like what makes the most sense, um, but you should be dropping assertions in throughout your tests. Um, and you should certainly be ending your test generally on an assertion and not just like submitting a form and leaving. It should end with a confirmation that yes, the functionality I tested did work. Um, so that's an intro to assertions. They're really useful and I encourage you to use them in your tests.